In this video, I'm going to talk about the difference between running a reaction under kinetic control and running a reaction under thermodynamic control. I'm sure that you recognize kinetics and thermodynamics from general chemistry, and I'm sure that you remember that kinetics has something to do with the rate or the speed of a reaction, and thermodynamics has something to do with energy or the energy associated with a chemical reaction. In order to explain the difference between kinetic and thermodynamic control, we need to use an energy energy diagram. So I'm going to draw an energy diagram and as I'm drawing it I'm going to talk about uh, what the energy diagram represents in case you have forgotten it. This is going to be a graph of energy versus time for a chemical reaction. And the energy uh, increases as we go up this axis and the time obviously increases as we go from left to right. And this could be, these can be drawn for any reaction. So we'll say that we just have a reaction, reactant A being converted into product B. Uh, so the energy diagram shows how the energy of the reactant changes as the reactant converts itself into the product. So perhaps for this A goes to B reaction, perhaps reactant A starts right around here with about this much energy. This would be at time equals zero. So this is at the beginning of the reaction before anything has happened. And you learned from general chemistry that the very first thing that happens is some energy gets absorbed from the surrounding. So there's a certain amount of energy that needs to be absorbed. And we call this initial amount of energy the activation energy, or E sub A. Once the reactant has absorbed that minimum amount of energy, the activation energy, then it is able to continue and proceed in the reaction in forming the products. I'm drawing this as an exothermic reaction. So here's reactant A, and here is the product B. And this is just a basic energy diagram for a simple one-step exothermic reaction. Now what we know about chemical reactions is that there is more than one thing that we can do with any given reactant A. So we can turn reactant A into B, but if we used different conditions or different chemicals, then we could convert A into something different, like let's say product C. And if we were to, to use a different chemical reaction and convert A into something else, that particular process would probably not have the exact same energy diagram. So maybe um, for A goes to C, we'll call this option number two, because A is always going to be starting with the same amount of energy, whether it's running down this pathway or running down this pathway, um, A is going to still start here, but maybe this second option, A goes to C, maybe it has a lower activation energy and gives us a, a just a totally different product. So let's say it looks like this. So here are two different uh, energy diagrams. They're stacked one on top of each other for two different options for molecule A. It could either take the green path and turn into B, or it could take the pink path and turn into C. These two different options represent a kinetic controlled reaction versus a thermodynamic controlled reaction. So as you know, as I've already mentioned, kinetics has something to do with the rate or the speed of a reaction. When a reaction is said to be put under kinetic control, that reaction is being run in a way that converts our, pro our reactant to our product as fast as possible. And this is literally just talking about time. And that is accomplished by having a very low activation energy. The reaction has 
a low activation energy, E sub A, because with all of our reactions, achieving the activation energy is the bottleneck or the slow step. So if the activation energy is low, it's not as difficult for the reaction to actually reach that activation energy and then carry on. When the reaction has a high activation energy, it takes more time for it to absorb the correct amount of energy for the reaction to proceed. So kinetic control, which is represented by the pink graph here, is just simply um, choosing a reaction pathway that has the lowest possible activation energy, which will cause the fastest conversion from reactant to product. Now, I know that I really didn't represent time accurately on this graph um, because it looks like they both finish at the same time, but that's, that's not accurate. The activation energy part is accurate. So for the other option, thermocontrol, which is represented by the green graph, we know that thermodynamics has something to do with energy. And so when we have a reaction that's being run under thermodynamic control, this is a process where we convert our reactant to the lowest energy product that is possible. So if we have reactant A and we know that one option would be to turn it into C and another option would be to turn it into B, when we are converting A into our low energy product B, then we are running that reaction under thermodynamic control. And this is just based off of the energy of the products of the reaction. Lowest energy products, as you know, are the most stable products. And they are always going to be more stable than the products we get when we run under kinetic control. So let's add one more thing up here to this graph. In green, this is a reaction that is under thermocontrol. Thermocontrol has high activation energy, but it has low energy products. And then in pink, we have kinetic control Kinetic control has a low activation energy, but a, that's a semicolon, it looks like a J. Low activation energy, but it has a high energy product.